Black, and I'm delighted to be joined today by David Brueggemann, my uh, my excellent colleague. So, David, tell us before we jump into talking about price transparency, tell us just a little bit about yourself and, and how you got to Guidehouse. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had a circuitous path that took us took me through uh, some banking experience, but um, after that, was able to join healthcare. Uh, spent about a decade working with payers and providers on really understanding the economics of the entire healthcare system. So I uh, was able to join Guidehouse about three years ago and have really enjoyed my time here. Fantastic. So, uh, you know, we're talking about price transparency and, you know, obviously I can, if I'm shopping for a, a car or a washing machine or on those, uh, you know, any type of uh, service, it's pretty easy for me now these days to, uh, to get, you know, clear, uh, clear pricing and comparative pricing from different places. Why has healthcare been so slow to adopt price transparency? Well, unfortunately, unlike purchasing a car or, or any other sort of good that's out there, the understanding of what healthcare expenses need to be at the beginning of the process is a little more complicated. Uh, an individual goes into one of these service locations and doesn't have any idea of the services that need to be provided. All they know is they have a specific pain that they want to uh, be able to address. So the challenge here is that the systems and the payers um, do not have a good understanding of those services that need to move forward. And so a lot of these new uh, shopability capabilities that are being brought online uh, in response to these new regulations are to assist those that are a little bit more shoppable in nature. So if we think about uh, orthopedic services, if we think about um, any sort of heart, heart services that, that are not emergent in nature, then they really wanna facilitate the shoppability of those services and making sure that you can price those moving forward. Uh, unfortunately, there has been some challenges in implementing these rules as well. Uh, and payers and providers are feeling the brunt of that now. Yeah. So, you know, so clearly if I need a knee replacement or I need a, a new heart valve or something like that, you know, th those sort of things are, are obviously more shoppable than, you know what, I've got this weird ache here. So I'm not sure what that's going to be, but I think people understand that. Um, what's been interesting is just the, the wide variation in what people wind up paying for the same procedure. What's the basis behind that? Well, I think part of it, it has been just past negotiations. So there without the information being available to the entire system, it's very difficult for one provider in a market to understand what another provider in the market is getting is is paying getting paid for those services. I think one of the challenges that we experience is that with this information that's coming out, some of those variables that go into that pricing. So think about things like what is your market position? How many facilities do you have uh, available in that market? What is the quality behind those services that are being provided? Some of that information has come out, but we never really had a relationship back to what is the price that's actually getting paid for that service. We're also seeing site of service shifts. So certain services that historically have been provided only in hospital systems are now being provided in ASCs. They're being provided in um, imaging centers that are out there. So as that, as that information, the price transfer, transparency information comes out, it becomes a new knowledge set that we can then be cross-referenced against these other variables and how folks are paid to create a normalization capability. It's really that economic uh, work in the action. We get to see it live, which is really exciting. Um, but it will result in some fairly significant changes in how our hospital systems are getting paid and how our providers and uh, payers position themselves within the different markets. Now, what's interesting is that, you know, we, we've had some early, uh, you know, regulation in this area to, um, and requirements and penalties for, for price transparency, for failure to adhere to price transparency, but not that much movement. Um, you know, what started and, and what is actually, uh, and, and why did, which, did some organizations decide not to actually uh, provide price transparency and instead take the penalties? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, this is a really competitive area. And if we are in a premium position uh, in terms of our pricing within a market, it doesn't behoove us to get that information out to, you know, the general public. So 
that's one of the challenges I think that um, hospital systems wrestled with when it came time to put the price transparency information from the provider side. Now, with the new regulation that's coming into effect, the transparency and coverage that's coming out uh, actually seven one here very very soon. Uh, payers are required to provide that information not just from hospital systems, but also from a much broader group. So that includes DME providers, the physicians, and um, although it has been delayed, eventually uh, the pharmacies as well. So uh, a pretty significant amount of information that's coming out, and um, there's not really any place to hide anymore. Well, you know, I think it's interesting that, you know, uh, certainly some of the providers I've run into, they've still opted to say, you know what, the, the penalty for us not providing this information is far less than the, the premium pricing that we can enjoy um, by, by not declaring our pricing. Um, but they're then grappling with, you know, the sort of the new consumer movement of like, how are they, they going to be a consumer friendly organization? Where is that shift happening? So, you know, really in the, sh there's a dichotomy in between these emergent services and these shoppable services. So when we think about the shoppable services, there's a, a, a significant change of foot. There is um, certainly, we talk a lot about our digital front door strategies to make sure that individuals are able to interact with the hospital system in the most appropriate way. But when it comes to the emergent services, not only do we have these, these challenges from a payment, and you know, certainly we've seen entire payer strategies around emergent versus non-emergent services, but the emergent services now come into uh, a new focus with the No Surprises Act, which now if, if there's an out-of-network service that's being provided, then now they're subject to the No Surprises Act, which ultimately determines some of the payment, um, payment elements that come into play there. So we see these strategies moving forward. Uh, you know, this is one of those things that if we look at uh, the past few decades, we had a time frame where there was really a, uh, a DRGs came out. Everyone got really excited about how that was going to interact with the system. We saw the um, APCs come out. And of course, that was a, a major change in how payments were made. And this is just that newest large change that really is going to you know, change how we pay for healthcare within this country. So, you know, there's argument how we pay. So I want you to take your payer provider hat off for a second and put on your patient hat. What are the sort of things that patients are going to see uh, and, and be able to do going forward? Well, it's really exciting. Um, so as we think about how uh, some of the uh, regulations that include from the No Surprises Act, the advanced EOB. So if you currently have insurance, um, there is a regulation that will be forthcoming that ultimately will provide you, um, you know, if you know a service is coming up, will actually provide you an explanation of benefits in advance of that service being provided. So that will include what happens from a benefits perspective, what happens from, uh, you know, what is your current payment and what will the, the payer pay on your behalf, which of course is really important because that affects your premium moving forward. So we, we see those changes coming up um, as the advanced DOB comes online. Uh, there, the shopability and the understanding of where those services performed um, are, is going to be, you know, continue to expand. Now, we also see from a digital structure the requirements around shoppable services that are associated with the price transparency uh, regulation is that we're seeing an evolution and what can happen through those, those tools that are being used by consumers. So as that evolution continues, we're seeing more and more connections to those consumers, which means a more and more ability to impact those consumers in terms of, you know, how can we help with the disease management and prevent you from going into the hospital in the first place. So continuing, continuing to close that gap in between what patients experience and what, what, the, what the hospital systems are ultimately looking to influence those patients towards. Yeah, so, you know, last question, if you were a health system that's been sort of sitting on the sidelines, um, you know, paying penalties and sort of waiting for this to either go away or something like that, um, what do you tell them? What's, what's the sort of the smart next step for them? Well, unfortunately, with the payer information coming out, that information is going to be public here uh, at the beginning of July anyway. So at this point, 
there's very few strategic reasons to keep that information close to close to the chest. Um, however, it is really important that your system come up with a strategy, a communication strategy that involves your quality capabilities, your total cost of care control capabilities. Um, you know, these are all part of a story that needs to be told about your organization. And if that story isn't prepared today, you need to get yourself in line to do so. Sure. Well, Dan, fascinating time and a really interesting topic. And really, you know, we'll be interested to see how the you know, new regulation and these increased penalties are actually going to impact uh, uh, the ability for people like you and me to go out and shop for, uh, uh, for new, uh, new healthcare services. So thank you again for joining us. Thank you so much.